Oh, hello. It's me, Mike, doing the intro this time. Welcome to Build Assets Online. And today we're going to talk about Kindle Publishing. Is it passive income or not? So as you know, Joe and I have Kindle Publishing as a part of our portfolio. Um, I mainly handle most of the work for Kindle Publishing. So Joe, do you, do you find Kindle Publishing is passive for you? Sometimes when I have to set up the Facebook ads and uh, you know you let me know 24 hours in advance as the bo <laughs> as the book is launching we don't even have the artwork yet it doesn't seem that passive but yeah, for the most part how many hours would you say that um, that particular task takes you even if it's short notice I would say like two or three hours a month it's not it's not a bad return no no it's not bad. No, so I think um, when it comes to Kindle publishing, it probably is one of the most passive income sources like you can possibly have outside from investing, just like stock market or even like yeah, a pure yeah. index fund or real estate investment trust, something like that. Um, and that is really the power. That's like the main benefit of Amazon is that they handle all the customer service for you. They handle all of the um fulfillment of the orders and that's why people love Amazon FBA so much but there's no inventory either so every day i mean for what i do at this point we put out say like a book a month and I, i'll tell the writer maybe twice a week sorry twice a month the the next book i want she produces it i send it to the editor once it's done I order the covers, and then I just throw it all into Kindle, hit publish, tell my virtual assistant, hey, this is the book, send it out to everyone that we, um, that sends out, like our, we'll do like email swaps, and other than that, I just really watch the graph all day, so I, it's not passive in the most literal sense, it's not a, you know, an index fund that I watch accumulate wealth while doing absolutely nothing but when it comes down to any of the online business models it is probably the most passive yeah so i think it's important to say mike is there a way that you can make kindle publishing not passive because i think for I mean, many people you can make anything not passive if you want um, if you decided to write your own books or edit them um yourself then it's certainly less passive and we started out i think i'd I like read every book um, for like the first maybe 10 books we ever put out. Yeah. I did read them. Um, I think maybe I edited them as well, but there's no reason to not make it passive because there's not, there's not a lot of moving parts. Right. Can, to be honest. That's what I'm trying to say is by the very nature of any business, it's not really passive on its own. So you have to, you have to kind of get into that frame of mind of, True. You're yeah. gonna make it passive, and I think that's kind of already encoded into our uh, our DNA here. Um, but for someone beginning, starting out, uh, they might not be thinking like that. So the reason I'm asking the question is, yeah, yeah, I want you to answer. What are all the things that people could do to make Kindle publishing a full time job? Well, they can they can certainly write their own books if they wish. Um, actually, I do. I am connected with another author or publisher who does write their own books um and she doesn't mind doing it i think that's you know if you like to write fiction books go ahead but you also need to understand that sometimes people will write for themselves instead of writing to the market and um yeah. that particular person i actually i talked with her a lot about that because like she was really into it but she would send me books and i i, I can tell that she was doing things for herself versus yeah what other people wanted and um within the last six months i know she didn't make a lot of tweaks she um took some courses and she like she is now killing it i think she um was a us usa today bestseller after that so nice yeah that's the most important thing is writing to market um there's editing the book there's what do, you, else? do you edit the books no do you have, yeah. do you have an editor Yes. So um, that's pretty easy thing to hire for. Just go on Upwork, search for a book editor, get some rates, and 
most people do a decent enough job, then cover designer, you can just go on Fiverr for that. And um, yeah, and then I do I do put everything into Kindle myself still. I do kind of tweak the end product. Yeah. So the only thing I do is I oversee the overall direction of what's happening. Yeah. So yeah. I tell the I tell the writer what I want the book to be about to a reasonable degree. Um, give it to the editor. I make the cover. I make the title. I tell the cover designer what I want the cover to look like. And then, um, that's really that's really about it. There's other like things you can do to build your list that are not passive, but yeah. in the span of like, in in the sense of online business, these. Kindle is probably the most outsourceable thing, and it's something people like have to outsource for the for the most part. Because in the beginning, everyone wants to do everything themselves, especially when it comes to like Shopify and drop shipping. Where, yeah, I'm gonna make the website myself. I'm gonna upload all these products myself. I'm gonna call the suppliers myself. I'm gonna do the Google Ads myself. I'm gonna do the customer service myself. It's all, and we did that. It's 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 like you know what to do inherently, so you wind up doing it. But if I say, okay, you need to get a, a book written, most people say, okay, well, like, I'm not that's, gonna that's, a lot of, that's a lot of resistance yeah, mentally to write a book. So they'll be more inclined to, to go ahead and outsource it. Um, same thing with, like, graphic design stuff. So honestly, like, a couple years ago when I was in Thailand and Kindle Publishing was, like, the only income source I had, that was like the most passive um i i my financials have ever been because yeah. all i had yeah i just had a writer a couple writers a cover designer and a va yeah. and that was that was it also when it comes down to passivity with with drop shipping and e-commerce and stuff like that a lot of things happen during business hours yeah so yeah. you are literally like working during you know regular job hours whether you have someone do it for you or not with kindle it doesn't matter like i would come home from my regular job and and before i quit my job and just just do things on kindle until i couldn't keep my eyes open anymore would you Uh, would you check your numbers during work that was the only thing i would check during work because <laughs> I was gonna say that would probably be pretty nice if, like, you didn't check your numbers <laughs> during work and then you came home and then looked at it. Oh uh, no, I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once you have a, like, once your Kindle is actually doing well and you just see the numbers growing and growing, I remember I would no, I would go to work. That would be the first thing I would open up. Okay. I wanted, and like at towards the end, I would I would get to work and I had already made more money than I would make at that you know during the day at that yeah. job. So. It felt it felt good to do that, but I was also like, "This is ridiculous." Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't be doing this anymore. Can't be checking the numbers, or can't be doing the job. I can't be doing the job anymore. Okay. <laughs> By the time I commute to work, I'm already yeah. I've yeah. already made that money. Yeah. So as far as the Facebook ad portion goes, which I'll talk about, I, you know, I mentioned if you're launching a book a month, it's probably going to be about three hours a month. Just and and I think the main honestly the main reason for this is because the Facebook ads platform is like so slow and like very buggy I find mm-hmm. um, so really it's just kind of dealing with oh this isn't working you know I'll do something on my desktop it, I won't see it I'll look at my mobile phone a campaign I created is not showing on my desktop but it's showing on my mobile phone so it's like little things like that that's really Mark Zuckerberg's fault um, yeah that I think causes the uh, that three that you know it could, could really be like 30 minutes but caused it to be a few hours um yeah for but sure. yeah i think um once you get organized with the facebook ads it's really like repeating the process over and over again because you're marketing to this you're growing your audience like your pixel but you're also marketing you know you're also kind of targeting your targeting gets very similar all the time and i think that actually makes it work a little bit better because if you're, it makes it easier to create the campaigns and also people, it's like a more of a warm targeting because people that are seeing it have seen your author, you know, your books yep. in the past. So they're more likely to click and buy. So the CPC gets cheaper. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do you feel like Facebook ads with um, Kindle publishing are actually like the easiest to get to produce a consistent result? 
I can't really get. So you mean like, in terms of like, like Facebook? Like at this point, we really just do the same thing. Yeah. We really yeah. just have a set formula down for each book. When we launch it, I give it to you. You put in whatever you do, and then. You know, we can we can keep that ad going at a sustainable rate. See, for, it's certainly easy. Like, if, if you think about Facebook ads, um, like from a holistic point of view, launching a Kindle book on Facebook ads, as long as you've done the book correctly, like you've like you kind of say marketing to the uh, writing for the market and not for the uh, writing for the audience and not for yourself. As long as all that's done correctly, I mean, it's easy to reach those people on Facebook. So it's like pretty pretty easy in that sense. Facebook ads get difficult, I think, when you're trying to reach a less <laughs> reach a less concrete audience with a less established market. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or or you have to like build up trust at a deeper level. So like for example, if we were to do Facebook ads for like build assets online, it would be a whole process of you know getting ourselves out there and just you know getting in front of people a lot. Whereas I feel like, and and that, it could be the same thing for something like, uh, I don't know, like anything, anything where you're just trying to more so create demand rather than fill it, um, because the demand, the demand for Kindle publishing, like fiction books, the demand is high and the demand is there. If you're trying to advertise like an insurance company on Facebook, I think the demand is like rather static. You either need insurance or you don't, and you need it at a certain point in your life, or you don't need it, period. Yeah. <clears throat> but on Kindle, these people are always trying to read. They just put down their latest book. They're going to open the new one. So from a holistic point of view, and I think that should make sense to everyone, I think it is the easiest um, – one of the easiest things in terms of Facebook ads. It's like way easier than like trying to sell like an AliExpress product or a T-shirt because, again, you're trying to – create demand like people if you're trying to sell a cool can opener like from aliexpress like people already have a stupid can opener like they're not gonna, they're not gonna be like oh my god i gotta get this american flag can opener like yeah and you're also doing facebook ads with kindle for like the point of spiking the algorithm yeah not necessarily producing some concrete roi on, yeah. on the exact ads to book sales so um in that sense it's it is a lot easier because it's not you, – you, you don't need it to work as well as, yeah. say, AliExpress product because you're just straight going for a profit on the front end. Yeah, I think ads in general, uh, whether you're doing – ads in general, unless you're selling something really expensive where you have a lot of room to work with, a lot of profit to work with, or you're doing ads for the sake of spiking an algorithm, um, I think either way – well, well, for the purpose of spiking the algorithm, like it's 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 much easier. Or if you have enough profit margin to work with, any other circumstance where you're doing ads, you're probably not going to make money. Period. Yeah, and that that's the whole point of click funnels, right? It's it's related to the whole concept of you're not likely to make a lot of profit on the front end. Yeah. So it's a whole software on how to get that profit on the back end. Yeah, because yeah, I could, and there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, ClickFunnels is a good software, but it just goes to show like that how necessary something like that is for a lot of what people do if they want to make it work online. Because if your if your margin is not there on the the front end, then you need to have a back end. Um, but if you can if you can break even on the front end or even make a little bit of money, and you know how to utilize the back end properly, then you can make a lot a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, all right, so I think we can kind of wrap it up there. I don't yeah. even know what we but, talked about this episode, Mike. What, what well, it was we... about um, how past <laughs> Kindle Publishing is. Oh, so right. <laughs> I think the short answer is that Kindle Publishing is not perfectly passive. It does require you to be putting in effort on some level each month. Um, but I do think compared to a lot of other business models, it is very, very passive. Say you spend three hours on Facebook ads. I probably spend no more than three hours doing what I do for the part of the business. So that's six hours a month to yeah. make a lot, a, a, a very, a very handsome yeah. amount of royalties a month. Yeah. Not, not a regular, regular Ro royalties are, royalties are amazing. Talk to your accountant. 
<laughs> Let's just say that these celebrities who got up making all these royalties uh, from their movies and music, they got it made, man. They got it yeah. made because royalties are probably the best form of income that you can have. Yeah. Yeah. Def. I mean, one of the Besides, best for sure. For, yeah. Maybe something like capital gains or yeah, just straight um Some, investment. Yeah. Investment. So I mean, a little bit off on a tangent here before we end the episode. If you notice that Mike and I are a little bit, I don't want to say not out of it. We're we're not out of it, but we're in we're in a, a, a point in our business where we're having a lot of deep discussions as to, you know, 2019 just ended, and we're trying to really structure everything for 2020. Um, the way we're trying to figure out how we're going to structure it for 2020, and there's a lot of moving pieces. We have a lot of websites, and you know, we're trying to figure out where to cut back, where to accelerate any new businesses we're going to be doing. We're trying to figure out how to really apply our focus. And the truth is it's very, uh, it's very draining to, uh, to think about all this. Don't you, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, the Kindle publishing part, I think we decided. The Kindle publishing part is staying like... exactly where it is. That's for sure. <laughs> um, because it is, it is the Kindle publishing is one of the most pass is probably the most passive thing in our portfolio right now, aside from some content sites that we have, but they don't earn nearly as much as Kindle publishing. That's, that's for sure. So Kindle publishing is staying in the plans in 2020. Um, like we're going to be, yeah, I don't know if we want to get into more detail on this, on, on, on this episode, but yeah, we really want to move from like less, we, we, we want to, we, we always tell our students to, focus on one thing, focus on one thing. And the truth is, is that it's hard to do. I mean, especially since we're always just throwing stuff at the wall, seeing if it works, you know, getting that feedback. Sometimes we haven't focused on one thing the way that we like to. So mm -hmm. now we're kind of evaluating all the opportunities that present themselves to us in 2020 and going to be attacking those with a, uh, laser laser focus yeah but i think the point is that um you have you do have to take all that action to have the opportunities in front of you and then you can decide so um kindle publishing sorry still, sorry. still a great option I, i'm going off on a tangent here guys thanks for watching yeah. be sure to check <laughs> out i'm trying to be real with the audience mike you know what i'm saying like i'm trying to you gotta be real i'm spilling my heart out to you guys out yeah. there in the in the universe <laughs> <laughs> anyway so we'll, we'll wrap it up uh if you want our free course build assets online.com slash playbook we have our link to our free discord community as well as our paid courses and our um one-on-one -on -one membership so check those out and the membership hot link is build assets online.com slash membership mike i'm not going to put you in charge if you're not going <laughs> to remember the links this is why we can't switch roles <laughs> all right guys take it easy <laughs>